Okay. Hi, Ash. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Just wanted to talk to you a little bit about one of our elective courses that I know you've taken and that you really enjoyed, and that is our CM597 Telebehavioral Health course, our three credit elective, and just some of your impressions about this particular course. What would you like people to know? Um, the first thing I think that's important for people to know is that going into counseling, we are taught that you're developing these skills for a face-to-face -face interaction in a room with someone. Um, and so when you do something like telebehavioral health, you know, it's easy to think that you can't express that same emotion and you can't make that same connection with those skills. Um, but what I found doing some of the role plays and stuff was that if the skill is there, you're able to transfer that online. Um, you're able to share with them what you're wanting to share with them. You're able to pick up on their little body movements. Like it's just that small adjustment that you make. Um, in a, it's, it's almost like you're developing your skills past what you would do if you were just in a counseling room. You know, you're having to look for a lot more detail in what they're doing. And I think that facilitates more of a connection in a way. Um, than if you're just sitting in a room with someone. So it sounds like the scope of what we're learning in a telebehavioral health even expands beyond what you would expect in a traditional counseling setting. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, because when you're in a traditional counseling setting, you get so much more to work with. You know, when you see a whole body, you get a whole body as far as their movement and what they're doing and, um, going into counseling, like you have this sense of energy in the room. And so it's almost like you have that to your advantage. Like you can almost feel, you know, tension or you can feel positive energy. Um, and when you're online and you're interfacing with someone, you've really got to, you know, rely on more than just that feeling that you get when you're in a room with somebody. And so you do, like you have to expand your skills beyond um, what you're taught. Exactly. You know, I had a really interesting conversation even just today when my daughter was telling me about a movie that she'd seen. And in this movie, um, the person was really interested in dating this other person and you know, they've never met in person. So this person never seen the other person's face. But the part that she found absurd is that they were communicating by email and fell, and fell in love. And she goes, who falls in love via email? They should have been texting. And that made me laugh because what I expected was, you know, how do you fall in love via email? You've never seen this person. They'd have to be face to face. And that wasn't even a consideration for my 17 year old child. It was a, you know, texting. So there are all of these other methods for connecting to people that we previously didn't recognize because we didn't have access to them. And now we do. And people communicate in so many different ways. What I'm hearing from you is that this particular course is training clinicians to be able to interact in these same ways that people are using anyway outside of the additional counseling setting. Yeah, and I think that's like one of the things that I feel um, is gonna be one of my strong suits is even in my practicum right now, which is the VCTC, I'm getting that opportunity. Um, one of my site uh, supervisor brought to our attention some of the digital platforms they have for their clients um, in times of crisis, um, different apps that they have that from anything from a daily affirmation to when you're in crisis and need immediate connectivity with someone that you have three individuals you can call if you can't get up with them, it gives you the suicide hotline number just like that. And because most people have a smartphone, most people are connected in some way to the world around them. And I feel like that's such an advantage um, in mental health because you want to be there when your clients need you. And while you have to have that boundary for self, um, I feel like opening up that opportunity to say, you know what, you're in crisis on a Saturday. I'm not in the office on a Saturday. Let's do something that can get you now. And I feel like that was another benefit was like learning that, um, how to set a boundary, but also to recognize being able to use this, not just for my benefit, but for future clients, if that makes sense.
In fact, I mean, look at how we're communicating right now, what we teach in the mm-hmm. Behavioral Health courses, how to communicate with clients virtually. And you and I aren't even actually in the same country right now. We're talking in real time about something that's relevant and about the direction in which our field is going and pretty much given an example of how that works. So I'm hearing you in real time. I'm seeing you. We can do facial expressions. This is a pretty good example of what the field has in store or what we're actually doing right now. To be honest, after I finish talking to you, I'm going to meet with a client and have a session because this is what the field allows for us to do now that we have this kind of technology and access to it. And another thing I think I love was like the way that we brought ethics into that particular course, Um, because with me being in Alabama, you know, I I looked at a lot of the different ethics and laws surrounding uh, telebehavioral mental health in my state. And my state really didn't say a lot on it. And so I thought for me, it wasn't an option. But then I realized that you can go to the next state and the next state and you find that state that allows for it. You follow these codes, you follow what they're saying, you follow your ACA because the ACA has started making their own little tweaks. And so it is a possibility. Um, Some states will soon have this signed in where it's, you know, technically i guess on the books like george has done um but until then it's it's just nice to be able to reach out to people and i'm from a rural area and so that kind of gives that added benefit to people that live outside the scope of getting to traditional therapy services in cities excellent point and there are two other things that your point inspired two thoughts that inspired me one is right now we hear a lot of commercials about different um, telebehavioral health services that allow for text and for video conferences and for phone calls, our students need to understand the ethics, as you brought up, involved and the practice of how this really works in the telebehavioral health world today. Um, The other thing is right now we've had a lot of stories about some pretty severe mental health issues that have taken place with celebrities and some actions that have been pretty shocking. And there's a a more of a need for us to understand how we can reach out and access people in times of need, just like you said. Someone has a crisis at 11 o'clock at night. They really may still be able to access their clinician if they're doing it through these types of means and methods. Um, It's a pretty important area for us to understand. And as you mentioned earlier, people are going to have to learn anyway, have CEs and different training so that they are aware of the direction in which field is moving. And, like, having the opportunity to, like, with, I guess, the Chicago school, like, I feel like I was lucky because I literally, like, took a course with someone that wrote the book on it. And so it's like, oh, okay, so in having these questions, let's reach out and find out. And so being in an online program, like, I'm already used to, like, this sort of interfacing with individuals. Um, But especially um, if it's something that's not really comfortable for students, I think it's another opportunity to really branch out of that comfort zone um, because really and truly, I mean, it's like we've said, I mean, it's the direction that the field's going. It's what we're going to have to eventually probably need to be versed in. Um, as technology moves, we have to move with it. Um, and I think about a lot of the different studies that I was exposed to that I've never thought about in the course as far as um, especially uh, some of your lower socioeconomic individuals Um, Some of your minority groups like Native Americans that live on reservations, they don't have mental health care on a reservation. Um, And so for them to receive services, some of them rely on this. Um, And so it it was really interesting. Um, You think about some of our troops overseas and the capabilities that we may have to one day be able to reach them in that time of need um, with, you know, PTSD being the way it is. I mean, there's so many possibilities in the field. And I think that it is a disservice to our client population to not verse ourselves in how we can most effectively serve those that we want to serve. Excellent point. And it's also great to see that there are certain third party payers or insurance companies that recognize the importance of telebehavioral health and reimburse for these services. So this is a win for our field across the board. Yeah, I mean, all in all, like, I don't see any, uh, like, I don't really see shortcomings to doing telebehavioral. Like, um, 
there's some like you learn like the shortcomings of some of the advertisements you see like you had mentioned with text messaging or emailing and stuff like that and how there is like this sort of loss and that's not something that you just strike up and do with a client on a limb you know you don't just do this because you've seen a client two or three times you know there has to be that established rapport like you're still very much relying on what you i guess would call like your um concrete skills of like being in a room with someone and establishing rapport and doing all of these different things uh, but then at the same time once that rapport gets established then you're able to you know if they need you and they shoot you a text message randomly throughout the day you don't have to worry about a tone being lost or not knowing what they're saying and how they're saying it like you're still able to pick up on that almost like it's like your client, you get this intimate relationship with them, and it's almost no different than texting or, you know, sending an email to a friend. If anybody still does that. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, according to my child, <laughs> no one does that. <laughs> yeah, according to your 17-year-old, no. Yeah, according to her. So at the end of the day, thumbs up, thumbs down. You think this is a good idea for people? I would give it two thumbs up. I would recommend it to anyone. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for your time. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, you're